Hello everyone, Sub Talk Radio is back again still in the airwaves. Cree X, Kickin, and Amino Rev. These are a few of the full disclosure non prop products my guest is known for. We'll talk about the company, learn about the products, and see where else the road takes us. Allow me to introduce Brian King of Titan Nutrition. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate you having me on. Oh, our pleasure, our pleasure. You know, the first as I mentioned in the in the intro. Um, big sell for me and our guests, or I should say our listeners, are uh, full disclosure labels. You know, I wish, wish more companies would take that route, but, you know, who am I to judge? Well, I, I, uh, I totally agree. Just from a, a supplement consumer myself, that was, um, that's obviously big for us. It's kind of something we hang our hat on, and um, whether, whether we want to um, – whether we want to or not, now that's kind of what we're known for is quality products, full disclosure, labels. So, um, darn it, we've, we've painted ourselves into a corner. We've got to make good stuff and tell you what's in it. No, I love it. I love it. Brian, now you guys are a little bit over, over a decade old. Maybe you can give me a little history of the company and maybe your background. Yeah, so as we were talking before, um, we, we uh, went live. We were um, um, 11 years old, I guess just going a little over 11 years old. Um, my background in kind of in the industry, I, um, I guess like a lot of guys, I had a, a sports background, uh, ended up wrestling uh, through college, and uh, so I was always interested in supplements. My, growing up, my dad owned a gym, so I did some retail uh, supplement sales there. Just really dipped my toe in the water. And then in college, I was fortunate enough to get a, a job uh, that would let me be a student athlete and work, um, just the local GNC, so the most generic you know supplement store you can think of. Um, and yeah, so this was, um, this was early 2000s, graduated in 99, early 2000s was, uh, working there. Um, the Titan as a company started in 2006, so shortly after I graduated. Um, and it was myself and, and the owner, um, of the GNC. By this time, we had several GNCs, um, that we were running and we, we kept in touch, had met, I, I had moved to Springfield, Missouri. Um, Jason, uh, Rule is my partner's name. Uh, so we had met, uh, he, he had had business up at one of his stores in Missouri. So we, we met up and, and we're chatting and, and also we just got to talking about kind of the state of the industry and, and what he was dealing with in the retail stores with, um, companies, you know, you mentioned the proprietary blends. A lot of it was these companies would, would kind of, um, build their brand on the backs of these retailers and then they would start, as they got bigger, more money would go into marketing, less money would go into to product. They would start kind of pulling more. raw materials out of the product, um, you know, because people were buying on the name, not necessarily what was in it. So as a, as a retail owner, it got hard to sell that product because, you know, it has 50 servings. You're selling to the customer for, say, $50, dollar a serving, and now it has 35. And you have to explain to the customer why it switched, when really the only reason it switched was because the company wanted – they got a little greedy. They wanted to make a little more meat on the bone. Or they, they, instead of having, you know, five grams of creatine, now it has two and a half. Things like that. And so it was just a, a, a simple conversation of, I mean, I think, um, I think we could do it better. You know, if, if I, it was kind of like a, like a bragging. Like, if I had a company, I would do this. If I had a company, I would, you know, it wasn't all bad, too. It was like, I really like the way X company is doing it. I would do that, and sure. I would stick to it for a long time. You know, I, I would be the best friend of these retailers. It was like, hey, I, I, you know, I know some people in manufacturing. Well, I know where we can get some raw materials and, and so on until we we had, as you mentioned, our, our very first product, um, Crex. Uh, we made every mistake you possibly can. Um, the first bottles, I think we had like a 1,000 bottles. Um, they came, and they had no barcodes on them. We forgot oh, really? to put a barcode on them. So one by one, we order, you know, stickers, sticker barcodes. And one by one, um, my, my wife and I are going through and putting stickers on these Crex in, in the spare bedroom of my 700-square-foot apartment. On the third floor, no less. Like the, the truck, you know, the oh, tractor trailer pulls up. Like, hey, am I at your warehouse? I'm like, no, you're at the warehouse, bro. It's, a, it's these apartments. So, you have an um, elevator at least? No elevator. No, we, 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 we walked them. Yeah, we we walked them up, uh, and we had you know we had our our GNCs selling them, and um, this was all of course a, a no no at the time. You can't own a GNC and your own um, business. I think we're we're past the point of them coming back to get us. So, so your own supplement sources a conflict of interest. We had them, and and uh, I, I was in Springfield, Missouri, and, and a, a company that a lot of people are familiar with now, uh, supplement superstores. Um, cool. Those guys, Chris. Uh, Chris Klein, Andy Fasillo were the owners, and I just knew them as um, 
just two college dudes like myself. Just they, they kind of became buddies. We'd hang out in the store, talk shop. My you know my experience in retail. They had one store with. Um, gosh, they must have had. I'd be surprised they had ten thousand dollars of inventory in the entire store. Half of it sat on the floor, and I would go in and talk all the time because they weren't busy. Um, <laughs> okay. So so I'm like, hey, my buddies and I are starting this company, and we'll sell to you guys. Um, I was a personal trainer. Like I'll send I'll send clients in to get it. We'll only sell to you. And they're like, yeah, you know, if you're going to send people in to get it, we'll carry it. So, I'm, you know, of course, I'm texting Jason, you know, back he's still in Hayes, Kansas. I'm like, just sold six Cree X to stuff in the superstore, high five, you know. Um, yeah. So that was that was our start, I guess. That's how we got started. So, now, Brian, when you, when you like, launched 11 years ago, were you, were you full disclosure then, or did you grow into being full disclosure labels? We were full disclosure then, yeah. Really? Yeah. That that was one of the things we, we kind of said – and, and I'll be honest, it's tricky. I, I see why at times uh, we we have released, and we, uh, we talked about the email, we have released a couple of products that were not, um, especially when it gets into the neurotropic stuff. If, if you do, here's what's tough as a company. If you do a lot of research, you know, you go into a cave for two weeks, you're doing a lot of R&D, and when you're, you're playing with stuff like, you know, neurotropics where you're messing with people's dopamine, trying to make them feel good, and you feel like you nailed it, as a as a manufacturer, it's hard to tell every other company in the world this is how we did it. Sure. So you struggle with that. You struggle with that, and and just wanting to be you know full disclosure, honest to your your customers. What we've come to find out is, hey, if if you want to be a knockoff, if you want to be a copy, go for it. Here's what we did. So yeah, I mean from from the start, we said like we're gonna. We're going to spend a lot of money on raw materials. Our, our game is not going to be – we're not going to be the best marketing company. We're not going to be um, – we're not going to be advertised in magazines and stuff. Our money is going to go into the product. So to do that, yeah. we got to put we got to put together an awesome product, and we got to tell people what we did. So that, that's that's kind of our theory behind the, the proprietary blend versus full disclosure. You know, Brian, and one thing in our, in our correspondence, that, that's one of the reasons why I started this show, to be honest, is I will never have – the multi-billion dollar companies, your muscle farms, all these other companies, because they've got the multi-million dollar ad campaigns. And, you know, I'm all about getting recognition to the, to the smaller guys that are mm-hmm. pumping out great products and don't have those, you know, $10,000 ad campaigns in, in flex and muscular development because right. you guys are the ones that are actually making great products that need that notoriety out there. Right. No, that's right. I mean, that, that's how it's – a, it's a very grassroots – um, following, if you start asking around about Titan, um, I think to a person um, that knows us would, would agree we make really quality products. And that's, um, like I said, it's not even being like anymore. It's not even being altruistic. It's just it's what we have to do. We paint ourselves into a corner. And we always say, look, man, I, 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 um, I'm, I'm not a special bodybuilder or anything like that. But I, I'm almost 36 year old. I, I still hit the gym every day and um, try to train pretty hard. And I, I don't want to make a product that I don't want to take myself. And and I. I think we'll stick to that. There's no, you know, we like I said, everyone here, to a person, we all work out. Um, we all are um, supplement geeks, you know. And I, I still, yep. I'll, I'll buy other people's supplements. I want to try them. I'm still, I'm still that kid that has the, you know, the the, the supplement cabinet at home. Like I can't, I want to try this. I want to try. You know, I'm looking online, so I want to make products that I want to take. Um, and I know I've been doing it long enough that if, if we're doing that, um, other people are going to appreciate that and want to take them as well. What's the other way you're going to evolve? I mean. Y- as you mentioned, one of your products was is still it's more of Creex, I believe, is one of your first ones. But you still have to you still have to look at the competitors. You have to try the competitors, just to, you know, for your own knowledge, for your own education. Yeah. So we and we do we try to one we try to stay off the the airways of uh, I mean as far as research and, go, and stuff goes, it's a lot of PubMed, it's a lot of peer reviewed. Um, if you look at our products, we don't we don't put together the cheapest formulas, but we do try to put together. The, you know, our, our carb is the, is the cluster dextrin, um, which is not, it's probably the most expensive, you know, performance carbohydrate you can get, but research has shown it's also the best. So we do, we try to stay off the airways of, of the bodybuilding.com, the bro science and stuff like that. Um, it's not just full disclosure labels, but it's putting uh, full active ingredients. Um, if we can't, uh, for whatever reason, if we can't put, uh, usually it's cost, to be honest. If, you know, you, you could, every company out there is capable of making, you know, say the best pre-workout possible, but can, is it affordable 
is, is the raw materials, the cost of manufacturing, is it affordable to bring it to market? Um, there has to be margin. You know, we ha- you have to make money. That period, you have to make money. That you wouldn't be a company. The stores, the retailers, um, they have to make a certain margin on it, and it has to be reasonable to the customer too. So working within those parameters um, is how you come up with with what your formula is going to be. Um, for us, it's it's finding not the bro science, what's hot right now. Um, now, maybe the category that's hot, you know, we want pre-workouts, we want um, fat burners, things like that. But we don't look a lot of other companies in terms of what they're putting in it. Uh, if you look at our, our products, they're, they're going to be pretty unique in the blends and stuff sure. that we use. So, so since you opened that door, let's, you've got a very robust product line, which, you know, you're almost like a one-stop shop to a point when I look at your products. I mean, what, what do you want to start? I'd love to educate some of the listeners on, on some of the different products. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll start with, um, as you, we're, we're nearly A to Z. I think this year, um, we haven't really announced it yet. We are coming out with a couple, um, new categories, uh, men's and women's multivitamin. Don't ask me why we haven't had that yet, but we haven't. So uh, we will have a, a really good men's and wins, women's multivitamin coming out soon. Um, we'll also have a pure uh, nitric oxide product, uh, pure pump product coming out. Um, if, if you want to start kind of get an idea of Titan, I'll start with something, you know, quote unquote boring in, in our in our Titan way. Okay. We have four different. Okay. We have four different types of protein. Um, our whey blend is. I guess what you'd call, Sean, probably – I mean, that, that's what everybody takes, right? Everyone has a, a way that they, it's breakfast, it's a meal or place, whatever. It's a way blend. Here's how I would say Titan does it differently than a lot of companies. There's other companies out there doing it very well, too. So in total, with, with everything we mentioned, the scope of our line, I think with si- different sizes and flavors of everything, we have 54 different SKUs. Um, on proteins alone? No, 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 in, in the entire line. Oh, oh it's like – okay. So when I mean 54 different SKUs, like that could be, you know, our Titan Way, you know, banana split, and that is five pounds and two pounds. So that's two SKUs. Four. You know, there's six different gotcha. flavors, 12 there. We have our meal replacement protein, six different flavors. We have a pure uh, microfiltered isolate, three different flavors of micellar casein. You no, know, so those okay. all add a SKU to the line. Anything down to we do um, bulk. Uh, we can get into this too, kind of what, why it's different, but creatine, glutamine. Um, because we, we we source those materials for other products, we create some glutamine, BCAs, um, nighttime fish oils, all the above. Um, but just taking our Titan way um, on the shelf, sitting next to a lot of products, it looks like I mean, it's a cool looking product, great flavors. Um, but the, kind of the adage of protein is protein is protein. We because we're um, a company that's not like you said, we don't have the ten thousand dollar ad campaigns. Um, where we can hang our hat is in the, the materials we source um, and use for the proteins. So I always start, if I'm talking to a customer, whether it be a store or a, um, a direct consumer, um, I'll give the examples. Hey, we, we order our own raw materials for these proteins. Um, our whey blend is very quality. It's a, a, a Titan whey. The namesake whey is a WPC, whey protein concentrate. 80, uh, so it's an 80% yield. Not all the, all the powder is complete protein. That goes for any company. Um, 80% yield. It has to be um, cold processed to get to the 80% yield. It's the highest yielding concentrate you can get. It keeps the immunoglobins, um, peptides, and everything intact, which is how a protein is active in the body. Um, it, it, so the product is 45% the WPC80. It is 45% WPI, whey protein isolate, uh, microfiltration 90 um, I don't have to explain why isolate's good. Most people know it's the you know fast acting, very pure, cold process isolate. So you have uh, um, 85% purity between those two and the protein. And then we use milk protein isolate, um, which is 93% yield. Uh, we use 10% of the product uh, is the is the milk protein isolate. I always say I don't tell you that to impress you because I just told you it was only 10%. But the taste and mixability of the Titan Way is amazing. A lot of that comes from the milk protein isolate. And then we do cool stuff with the flavors. We don't have a boring, you know, our vanilla is vanilla wafer. It's actually the vanilla, and then we add a little nougat to it, so it has a complexity and a, and a, a robustness that it tastes great just with water. And then looking at some of your other flavors, top, at some of these interesting ones, toffee macchiato, snickerdoodle, devil's food cake, very, very interesting, very impressive. Right, so that's what we didn't want to do. We didn't want a boring chocolate, a boring vanilla, so we took the chocolate, and we added some dark chocolate and some... <clears throat> Um, some, just some different stuff for complexity. Um, 
the toffee macchiato is, is my favorite. A lot of people's favorites. It's like a caramel coffee heath bar, I guess, would be a good example. If you like heath bar, you love the toffee macchiato. Even the banana split. Um, banana split's not the best seller, but I'll tell you this, Sean. People that buy the banana split always buy the banana split. I think what keeps some people from from getting it is they think of banana like in, in a – in a protein or a, you know anything other than a banana, like a, a fake, I would call it like the Laffy Taffy kind of sla- banana yep. flavor, that artificial banana. Um, so what we did, uh, again, wanting not to be the, the, the cookie cutter, you know, basic company, Matt, our, our flavor guy, he calls himself a chemist. I'm going to call him the flavor guy because I don't see any beakers on his desk. Um, <laughs> okay. He, I give him a hard time. Um, so he, he um, what we asked him to do, it's, it's banana, uh, and then we added some uh, – of the same nougat we put in that vanilla, um, and then some really light fruit flavors. So literally, it, it, it tastes like banana, but it is a banana split. It's a it's a really mm. robust banana flavor. Yeah. So how long does something like that come? I mean, how long does it take for something like that to analyze? You know, again, because as you mentioned, a lot of people go to typical chocolate vanilla and sometimes strawberry. But with, with going yeah. into creations like that, that must take you a while, no? Or a lot of different uh, it, it, so you know, it's on our, so our, our, what we call our R and D process. Once we once we have the the raw material, you know, the, the ways, once we have whatever product we're making, you can nail it like, hey, this is it, or it can be a lot of back and forth. So that's completely um, – that's a tough one to say. I will say from conception, maybe not with proteins because it's, you know, it's, it's a little easier. Protein, the commodity. Um, but like with a product like Crex or our fat burner at nighttime, um, from when we know about it, from conception to when it's actually sitting on a shelf – that a customer can go buy it is is literally probably six to eight months. So is it just, it's just you and a bunch of guys just hammering Dixie cups or what of of, of samples? When you mean like for the R and D process? Yeah, once it's once it's the the formula's nailed, like we feel like hey we nail it and we'll and we'll try the formula even unflavored. Yeah. How's this going to feel? How, especially like fat burner stuff like that when you're messing you know with stimulants and and um, dopamine and, and things like that and then um, that might just be raw materials. You know, you're just taking them, seeing how you feel. But, yeah, the flavoring is, is literally sitting around. You have, you know, watermelon splash, one, two, three, four, five, six. Try them all. Okay, everybody's done. Which one do you like best? You write it down. You know, so my yep. my decision doesn't influence yours, and we'll do that several times, get as many people, you know, kind of weighing in on it as possible. Um, lots of ladies, lots of young people, because, you know, the, the big 40-year-old bodybuilder doesn't give a shit what he's, what he's drinking. Um, yep. So try to get opinions of, of people that, that really are going to buy on taste, and then you go from there. And that's, that's one thing you just hit on it is is that's the difference from because I'm a couple of years older than you, but when we both started training years ago, going back, I mean I'm going to go back 25 years, that all the supplements had flavors on them, the catchy flavors, the vanilla, the chocolate, the fruit punch. But at the end of the day, I called it gasoline flavor because none of them had flavor. They all taste like crap. <laughs> right. And at the end right. of the day, it was more of, okay, what is it going to do for me? Is it going to lean me up? Is it going to put some size on me? Who cares? We chug any, anything. But then we fast matter, forward yeah. 20 years later. Now sometimes I, sometimes I wonder if it's the product first and then flavor secondary or flavor first, then uh, ingredients. Yeah. So you, you do wonder sometimes. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, I mean, people um, – you know, like you know, our, our amino rev is 17 grams of amino acids. And I tell everybody all the time, like, it, it, it tastes pretty good. Like, it, it tastes good. But if you're expecting to drink Kool-Aid, man, it, it's 17 grams of amino acids. It's not Kool-Aid. If you want Kool-Aid, go drink Kool-Aid. Yep. If, you, if you want an awesome product, you know, that's a, that's a tough – we can flavor 7 grams of amino acids, no problem. 17, a little different story. So it's, it's about being aware what you're taking, why. Like you said, are you buying on flavor purely or are you buying on um, – on what's in the product. The nice thing is, I mean, flavoring has come a lot, even just since we've been doing it, flavoring's come a long ways. Oh, and certainly. You, go, you know, going back at, you, um, you know, I was, when I was, um, my dad's gym, Sean, this goes back, there there wasn't whey protein. It was egg protein. Remember that? It was unflavored egg protein. Oh, yeah. And if, if you wanted um, uh, amino acids, it was uh, desiccated liver tablets. That was your, that was your favorite oh, yeah. amino it, acids. We, we referred to them as horse pills back in the day. Yeah, yeah, you know, you'd, you'd put the you'd put the whey protein. I don't know why, but it was like it was the about whey. It was it was the unflavored. It might maybe it was vanilla. You know, once they whatever they called it, it was the egg white protein, uh, desiccated liver, um, wheat germ, and orange juice. And you blend those up, and you didn't care. You, that was that was that was just that was part of taking supplements. That's just how they tasted. You know, except now, you know, fast forward twenty twenty five years later, and and you know we're we're making a watermelon rancher pre-workout that literally tastes like a Jolly Rancher. So fortunately for um, 
all the young young guys out there, supplement takers, um, you're entering an era of, of things tasting really good, and, and you're probably a bit spoiled. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. What uh, what else do you want to discuss as, as regards to your products? What else are maybe some of the uh, some of the better sellers? Um, you know, right now, so we we mentioned Creex for a while, and I don't want to hammer on that too much, but we, we just came out. Um, with a new formula, uh, it's probably, gosh, it, I said we, we came out the first, the first rendition of it was 11 years ago. This is probably our sixth, fifth or sixth different rendition of it. And, and Sean, I, we don't brag a whole lot, um, but we, this one is lights out. Like we'll, we'll brag on this formula. We nailed it. It's a, Crex is almost a two pound pre-workout. So when you, you know, you picture yourself buying these pre-workouts and how big they are, what size of the scoop they are. Crex is almost two pounds. In the entire wow. formula, it's a tw- it's a 25 gram serving. So you know what else is 25 grams? Your protein is a lot of times 25 grams. Obviously, a little smaller scoop. It's a more dense product, so the the um, weight to volume ratio is a little different. But it's a big scoop, and it is loaded with actual nutrients. That, you know we don't believe in the crazy high stem um, um, supplements. I always say that your your heart rate should be up because you're working out, not because you took a pre workout. So we took it right up to the limit where we think we can give you a good focused, you know, some energy from caffeine, but not have your heart pounding out of your chest where you're, you're like, God, I can't, I can't catch my breath, you know, because I took this pre-workout, let alone I'm trying to get some squats in. So it's, it's uh, 275 milligrams of caffeine, but it does have, it has a half a gram of tyrosine for a nice focus. People like to take tyrosine for, um, you know, during the workday for memory and focus. It's got 100 milligrams yeah. of DMAE, which is a choline metabolite that bumps up your dopamine nicely. I always say dope, if you want to know what a, a um, a dopamine boost feels like it's like when you go to uh you go to vacuum your house and clean the floors and all of a sudden you find yourself cleaning your car sweeping out the garage and at the end of the day you're like holy shit i got so much done like that's a dopamine high that's a great feeling to have in the gym um and as far as like actual materials to build it's got six and a half grams of creatine buffering agents to, to help that creatine absorb um digestion is a small intestine where your body is supposed to absorb its nutrients uh, a full dose of bcas 7.2 grams of nitric oxide boosters, 2 grams of beta alanine. Um, it's just a, it's like five products in low in, in one. It's a it's a loaded pre workout, so very nutrient dense. And Brent, I'm gonna out on a limb here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm gonna say 275 is for some people it's a hefty amount, but in today's society it's kind of low because I've seen people doing double that. But with the with the addition of the dextrose, it's probably a really smooth. Uh, I guess. I'm going to say high. might be the wrong word. It's not a big punch in the face because the dextrose is probably slowing down the absorption a little bit. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. So the dextrose, the, there is a, a bit of dextrose. And then before anyone says, oh, you put dextrose in your you know, filler in your pre-workout, we didn't. There's, uh, so it's good you brought that up, Sean. Thank you. It's, there's three grams of dextrose, and it's in there for a reason. Your, your nutrients absorb better. Um, if you have a bit of dextrose glucose, it acts as a catalyst to get them to where they're supposed to go. It's a shuttle. Um, anything below eight grams, you go by the ADA, American Diabetics Association. Anything below eight grams, really ten grams, you know, keep I always say keep it under two digits, is going to have yep. zero effect on the pancreatic release of insulin. Um, so you're safe there. You're not going to stop burning fat because you took a, a few grams of dextrose before your workout. The pre-workout is going to absorb better. Um, and yeah, the 275 where, where we came in at, we do have pre-workouts that have um, our kick in. You can, you know, it, it's um, 50 servings, or so you can take two scoops, so you can get more caffeine than that. The 275, we wanted to keep it below 300 milligrams. It is a pretty smooth, as you mentioned, smooth feeling. We use the caffeine and hydrous, a uh, nice smooth um, energy boost. Um, but you're right, man. I mean, it's while it sounds high to maybe just a casual coffee drinker. Sean, I see pre-workouts today that are um, – I, I won't, I won't uh, call out any companies, but I, I know one in particular that's 540 milligrams of caffeine, and that's, that's just ridiculous. the beginning. It's just the beginning of the stimulant complex. It, I mean, and there's other – there's chemical stimulants, all that other stuff. So it is crazy. When I say we want to stay away from that race to be higher and higher stimulants, it gets crazy. You know, like, oh, how strong is your pre-workout? Which should mean how nutrient dense is it? Unfortunately, in 2017, what a lot of you know kids are referring to is how much stimulants in it, which is not why you take a pre-workout. That should make you be you want to take a nap on the bench, um, you know, 45 minutes into your workout, rather than you know push through and blow you know blow up another 45 minutes of, of chest work. So um, that's that's kind of how we arrived at the, at the 275. Um, for us, you're right. I feel like we're we're pushing it, but uh, for a lot of companies and and and, ca- and caffeine, the caffeine hydrous 
uh, one, it's a natural stimulant, and it's the, the standalone stimulant. In Crex, um, and I mean, a lot of the companies are just willing to put stuff in there that we're not willing to do. And also with the beta alanine, you've got a, you've got a good dosage there, but is it safe to say that people are not going to get the the tingles that they want? Because that, that's a big that's a big discrepancy that I see too. Is people don't understand beta alanine because they think if they're not getting the tingles, which is whatever it's three three grams or three point two grams, that it's not a good product. But they don't understand that that's not really where you need to be. Yeah, it's not. So the, the tingles, and, and that's kind of to a person too, right? Like not. Everyone, yeah. I'll say it in here too. So people say like, "Oh, I took it once, and I got really flush. I got those tingles, my ears burned." And then the next time I didn't take it, I might be getting used to it. Um, two things have a lot to do with how much you quote feel the tingle of beta alanine. Um, one, do you have any food in your stomach? You know, think of it if you're if you're taking any kind of medication, anything like that. If it's the only thing well, that enters your system, it's going to be a lot more harsh. So if you're taking a pre-workout on a complete empty stomach and you have two, three uh, grams of beta alanine, you, you're going to get a lot more itch. Secondly is if you have a, a lot of blood flow. So think of a concentration of beta alanine, um, you know, kind of where, where your blood pools in your body at rest is different from where your where your body's pumping blood during exercise. So if you take beta alanine and you maybe wait 20, 30 minutes before you go and actually are moving around at the gym, then you get at that kind of that red face and that tingle behind the ears, right? Um, but if you were to take beta alanine, um, maybe take it with some carb or something before you worked out and immediately start working out, you may say, well, I didn't feel it that time. Well, it's not that it's not there, um, but you, you're just it's, it's in your bloodstream and you're pushing that blood all throughout your body, so the concentration feeling of beta alanine is dissipated. Sure. But, but again, I, I think a lot of it is, you know, a lot of it is bro science. And I know you're, you, we kind of discussed a little earlier, but some people realize that, okay, you get it from certain amounts and other people, again, how much is caffeine and am I going to get the tingles and what's the flavor? But again, we can go off on a different path on another show on that one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, one other thing I'd love to talk about, you discussed the proteins, we talked about your pre-workout, and then maybe cover one of your, one or two of your thermos fat burners, very popular in today's society. Sure. So we, we have um, our, our um, it's actually relatively new, and not, not, uh, the product's not new, but the formula, formula of it is new. Our Lipo Shred, um, again, it's a full disclosure label. Um, I should grab one to kind of give you the rundown. But, um, again, we didn't want to give just a ton of stimulant because there's a lot more to burning fat um, than just, you know, putting stimulant in someone's body. Um, so with the Lipo Shred, we put a lot of, actual thermogenic properties. What I mean by that is, um, like, have things that thermogenesis, for, for those who don't know, is is the process of heating the body up. Of course, um, heat production is your, your body produces heat uh, by burning calories. So anytime you can get um, a higher body temperature, your body's burning more calories. Um, we did, again, we did use caffeine, but it's uh, 140 milligrams. That's per capsule. You can take two capsules if you want. It's going to give you a pretty good, a pretty good buzz there. Um, we use the citrus rantium, which is also known as citrus rantium's uh, um, synephrine or bitter orange. Um, we use, again, and please, if you, if you guys go to our website, you can see the full disclosure label on any of these products we're talking about. Um, we use the capsicum, which is a, like a red pepper extract, um, red pepper being something that does heat up your body. Um, and then we use the nootropic, uh, what we call nootropic drive complex. Um, this would be uh, I'm, I'm skipping over some products, some uh, sure. some ingredients here. There's uh, Yohimbi HCL at 1.5 milligrams. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I want to mention the, the neurotropic drive complex. This is one I said it's, it's a tough one. We did put it in full disclosure. I get sometimes my companies get a little shy about putting out there. This is something we, you know, we have to dig and find the right amount. You're messing with people's dopamine levels. Um, a, a good dopamine boost, you feel pretty good. Too much, you feel like crap. So when you nail it, you want to um, – Sometimes it's attempting to hold on to that. We use the same DMAE that we use in our pre-workouts. Um, 120 milligrams of DMAE is a choline metabolite, bumps up the dopamine. Uh, we also use uh, phenylethylamine, uh, PEA, often called uh, 100 milligrams. The reason we put the neurotropic complex in the fat burner, so anytime you're at a, at a calorie deficit, um, if you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to cut, whether you're a competitor or just, you know, just trying to get in shape, um, you don't feel like moving. You know, you don't. A lot of times, the first thing that goes is your is your drive to get up and move around. Sure. So, kind of making you feel good, just giving you some motivation, 
helps keep your body going, keep you moving to the gym. It can't be a lot of what I would call like fake energy from just stimulants. You have to give your body um, some motivation. So literally making someone feel good um, is going to keep them going, keep them dieting, keep them burning calories and not be like, man, this is too hard. I can't, I can't get off the couch. I don't, I don't want to go to work, let alone go to the gym. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, in that we use um, some fumar bromide and hordenine, again, to, uh, some metabolic support there. Um, one thing we do a little different with our lipo shred, we put some diuretics in there uh, with the dandelion uh, extracts. We always say lipo shred is formulated straight on strong enough for a competitor, but used for anyone. Um, you don't have to take a diuretic, or it's a mild diuretic. You don't have to take a diuretic to lose weight. Um, but Sean, this is America, and, and people like instant gratification. So oh, even though it's water weight, yeah, yeah. I mean, so even though it's water weight, it, it is some weight loss. You can use some, lose some subcutaneous water. I would say it's, you know, hey, if, if you got a, if you got a class reunion coming up, a, a, a vacation, you only got two weeks. You're probably not going to burn a ton of fat, but if you can peel off. You know, five, ten pounds of water weight and, and uh, get some weight down, feel better, uh, then my push is, is going to help out. So, um, then we finished off with some ginger root, um, just to be so it's a little easier on the stomach. Uh, people can get a little, if they're taking the, the thermogenics and stuff, it can be a little rough on the stomach. We try to eliminate that as much as possible with the ginger. Gotcha. So, so when it comes down to it, Brian, uh, is there a certain. Uh, demographic that you're trying to go after, or, or, or you know, when I look at your products, you're almost a full spectrum, but is it truly a demographic that you're seeing uh, buy your products more than the other, meaning like age or, or, or sex? That's a tough one. Um, and I almost have the question for uh, a store, I guess, that, you know, that would be selling a lot of it. We, we, our, our game is more in, in retail stores rather than direct to consumer sales. Um, I, I think. I, I would say it's it's a bodybuilding product, but but I mean that not by like like again the, the bro science guys that are buying the you know the cheapest thing they can get on bodybuilding.com because it, it's it's because that's what's being advertised. It's a I, I think our consumer um, is an educated consumer. This is speaking very in, in general. I think they're they're more educated consumer. They're buying more on content rather than price. Um, yep. Our products are are. Um, they're not uber expensive, but they're not they're not going to be the cheapest product on the shelf. Um, you know, and it's, you get what you pay for in the world of supplements. So I'm, I'm happy saying that. Um, as far as gender, gosh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think there's a huge split. I can tell you, like you mentioned, the toffee macchiato protein. Uh, I bet that sells two to one girls to guys. The girls go nuts for the really? coffee flavors. Yeah, I mean it's good. It's very good. But yeah, you know, guys are you know they're buying the vanilla chocolate and mix it in their shake and stuff. But the girls are are sipping on the on the like. My wife loves the toffee macchiato. Loves it. Straight uh, with yeah. water or with milk or how does she take hers? Water, water. Yeah, I mean, I mean you can you can mix it with milk. Uh, almond. We don't uh, we don't do any milk. We do we'll do like the almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. Sure. Be delicious. But um, all of our proteins, like when we're doing our R and D and stuff, we're testing them all just with water, straight water. That macchiato, depending on depending on the actual consistency, would probably go good in a coffee. Maybe half a scoop or a quarter of a scoop, just to give a little extra flavor to a black coffee. Excellent. No, it it, it is very. We've we've done that. I'd say we have another one. Our, our stage seven, which is we call our high protein meal replacement. It's um, seven different proteins. Um, it's soy free. It does have some. It has five grams of fiber. Uh, it does have a little carb, of course, with the fiber. It's, it's a meal replacement. So it's a little more balanced macros. It's got six grams of fat from MCT oils. And that one, of course, if you add fat to anything, it, it's going to help the flavor, right? And so it has this really creamy, rich mixture. We have a white chocolate mocha. Um, that one's amazing with coffee. So I, I want to throw that in there because you mentioned mixing with coffee. That's an excellent choice with coffee. Stage 7 white chocolate mocha for a, sh- a shameless plug. You know, and to go for the tangent just for a minute, MCT oil, that's another product that, that always comes around in cycles. I'm a big advocate of it. But it always seems to get on a high point and drops off for a little bit and comes back in again. So I don't know if it's just that people are not educated or I guess I don't understand the cycle sometimes with MCT oil. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, we don't have any, we don't sell any standalone um, MCT. But when you're trying to, for us, we're trying to make, you know, say a product like Stage Seven, and you want to get some some fats in there. Um, so it has that balanced macro. In MCT oil, for those you don't know, is, is medium chain triglyceride. It's a fat. Uh, but it's a healthy fat. Actually, helps turn on uh, brown fat burning, uh, increase body you know, thermogenesis, increase body temperature. Uh, and you're right; it, it does. Like sometimes it's touted as the best stuff ever. Uh, the cool part is, and I'm saying this completely 
um, this doesn't, you know, not for Titan, but um, we have, you know, my wife and I use jars of MCTO at home. That's how we'll cook eggs, uh, made salad dressings and stuff with it. So, um, yeah, if you haven't if you haven't checked out MCTO, it, it's a um, a nice way of adding some fat to your diet. I know competitors who have said that they've used um, MCT oil, you know, other than the trace fats they're going to get in chicken breast, turkey, things like that. Um, MCT oil is their sole uh, fat source during prep. Yes, and the one thing for, for anybody that's listening that's never used MCT wants to cook with it, it burns a lot quicker, so just be, be aware of you using it. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't let it get to the smoke point. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, Brian, it's been a great conversation thus far. I know you mentioned some multivitamins coming up. Um, anything else that, that, that the listeners can look forward to in the future? Well, you know, the, the, the multivitamins, the, the nitric oxide products, uh, that's the new stuff we're coming out with. But if you follow Titan, um, and please do, um, Titan Nutrition, all the, all the regular uh, channels, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, we do Twitter, starting to do more on YouTube. Um, you can find out more, you know, kind of what we're coming out with. We, we do try to be pretty innovative with, what, with our current products. Now, I say that we won't change anything just for the sake of changing it, but um, when we have an opportunity to improve a product, we'll do it. So um, it's not just the new stuff we're coming out with, um, but if you follow Titan, you, you'll see that, you know, we may keep the, you know, lipo shred, Creex are the ones we talked about, but they'll go through several renditions. So um, the, the two new ones are for sure coming out this year. I think we will change um, our, our, our kick-in pre-workout is our, is our non-creatine pre-workout. Um, that'll have a little update this year as well. Um, our labels are changing, so, gosh, you change uh, – you change the look of your label with a supplement company, it, it almost changes the entire face of the of the company. So that's something we're um, really looking forward to is getting that new look out there. And um, I'll, I'll say, that, you know, there's a lot of momentum here. It's been a really fun time uh, to be at Titan. And I, I think uh, with the momentum we're building in 2017, by the end of the year, um, the, the company will have a different look. Hey, Brian, obviously aside from your website, and I know you mentioned a few GNCs, are there any, are there any uh, online stores people can buy the product from aside from you folks directly? So um, there is not. We, we, as I mentioned, we are a retail-based um, business. Um, we actually gotcha. uh, don't have re, uh, GNCs. This, this would be a whole other podcast. We actually don't have GNCs. Um, there is about 250 stores um, nationwide that carry Titan. Um, you can find our stuff on our website, uh, titannutrition.net. Um, there, if, if you're interested in Titan, if you don't have a Titan Nutrition retailer in your area, um, Number one, the best way to go, you know, go ask about it at your local uh, retail shop if they, if they don't already carry it or contact us. Hey, um, I, I want to shop local. This is my retailer, and we'll reach out and see if we can't make a connection um, uh, uh, there with your local retailer to get some Titan Nutrition in there for you. Great. And, and once again, Brian, where can people learn about you, plug your social media, Facebook, all that good stuff? I am Sean. I am extremely boring uh, on social media, but it is uh, Brian M King uh, at Facebook, uh, and it is Brian underscore M underscore King on Instagram. Great. And for people and people that are interested, the, Brian has a wonderful dog, a beautiful dog that you can go look at pictures there. So yeah, you can find you can find some pictures of Ezra. Uh, that's funny you mentioned that. We talked about that before the show. I was driving in. I told I said, Sean, I got to let my dog out of the car here and, and get her in the office. But I do have a, a, a beautiful little red nosed pit bull, Ezra, uh, who comes to work every day, and she uh, is pretty good about making an appearance on our YouTube. You know, we'll do videos talking about product here at the warehouse, and, and Ezra is sure to get some camera time. Uh, so she'll be on our Instagram, YouTube, and stuff like that. So I, I appreciate the plug. And Ezra's taking a nap right now, but she'll listen later, and uh, she'll appreciate it as well. Great. Well, good shout-out to her. Well, folks, it's time to wrap this puppy up, no pun intended. Thank you once again to our guest, Brian King, for his time today and educating us on Titan Nutrition. Be sure to tune in for future guests as the shows keep coming weekly. Have a great weekend, and thanks again.
Thank you.